At the beginning of the school year, I struggle with trying to assess every single student without sacrificing too much class time. So I've created this video that I hope will help solve that problem. What I'm going to do is go through the exercises and have the students go through the vocal range test at the end. They're going to record themselves and upload it to Google Classroom, and that way I can listen to every student without having to do it during the school day. I hope this is a tool that will help you as well, and I hope you have a great school year. Every singer is born with a unique vocal anatomy. Resident chambers, tone, texture, vocal cords, and vocal folds help determine the quality of sound and range. Knowing your vocal type can help you choose the songs that best work for you. This is especially important when you are singing in choir. Your director will need to place you in a section that works best for your voice type and allow for the best choral blend of your ensemble. In today's Music Lessons with Mrs. Morris, I will be showing you the six common vocal ranges and how you can identify the range that is best for you. So let's get started. There are six general voice types, soprano, mezzo-soprano, contralto, which is also alto, tenor, baritone, and bass. And each of these sections have a specific set of notes that they can sing, like you see in this chart. However, keep in mind, it is rare for any voice to fit perfectly into these ranges. But for our purpose today, we will be using this chart to help us determine what your vocal range will be for choir. Okay, the first thing we need to do is warm up our voices because you're really not going to know your range unless your voice is ready for it. And there's a couple of things that I do. They're kind of funny, but the first one is a siren. So let's do the siren together. And do it one more time. Try to go a little bit higher this time. And the other one is called lip trills. This next part of the video is your vocal placement test. Feel free to practice it first, but then when you're ready, make sure that you make a recording of all the exercises and the chromatic scale. I will not be singing in this portion of the video because I want to hear just your voice. When you're finished, be sure to upload it to Google Classroom and turn it in. Remember to only sing the notes that you can comfortably sing and write down your lowest and highest notes so that you can share them with your teacher. Thank you again for joining me on Music Lessons with Mrs. Morris. Choir directors, I hope this is a great tool that you can use to free up some of that valuable rehearsal time. God bless and have a great school year.